Today, my special guest on Hello Darling is Daniel Kerr, former Australian rules football player for the West Coast Eagles, who was selected as the number 18 pick in the 2000 AFL draft. Daniel, an inside midfielder, played 220 games for the club between 2001 and 2013 before he retired. He was the 2005 Brownlow Medal runner-up and a key part of the 2006 Premiership for the West Coast Eagles. Daniel was named an All-Australian in 2007. However, his life and career were not without controversy. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Daniel, how are you? Yeah, good. It's a lovely day. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. How are you today? I mean, today all together in a scale out of 10, your life? My life had a 10, probably a solid seven and a half, I think. And I know you've got high standards, so that's a very <laughs> high ranking, yes? Yeah, not going as good as I've gone before, but not going as bad as I've gone either. You're now a father of three beautiful children? Yes, three girls, three six, girls. five and ten months yesterday, actually. Congratulations, happy birthday. Yes, not quite celebrating the ten month, but in a couple of months we'll celebrate the year birthday. Yes. Yeah, she's been a really good baby. Beautiful. And you're in a very happy relationship, yes? Yeah, it has its moments, but generally happy. I think she's, oh. yeah, I think she's happy. I hope she's happy. Beautiful. <laughs> so you're also working now with an organisation called Together We Can? Yeah, we, uh, I've been working, uh, being involved in Together We Can for three years now. Um, just on the back end of me, you know, getting in my well-documented tra trouble I started there and it's been it's been good both for the the kids that were the kids in the communities that we're involved in and, and also for, it's been really good for me as well beautiful so what work together we can does like a little bit for our viewers in case we we use sport art music and dance uh, to inspire kids to make healthier choices um, with the belief that being involved in organized sport and being involved in um, positive atmospheres can mm -hmm. um, only lead to positive choices when they're not involved and healthy bodies, healthy minds make better decisions and we try to inspire them to make better decisions. Beautiful. It doesn't always work but we hope it does sometimes. Beautiful because I always think the phenomena of music, phenomena of sport which doesn't need a language, correct? It connects people from all over, all walks of life regardless where you come from. Yeah and you, you generally find that Every kid will, will like one of those uh, mediums. So we have a we don't we don't go there, and there's not something that the uh, the kids are, aren't interested in. So yes. not every kid is in, loves sport and soccer and baseball and football, but you 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 rarely find a kid that doesn't like either sport, art, music, or dance. So mm -hmm. there's always something there keeping them interested, which makes our job easier. That's fantastic, Daniel. You yourself obviously grew up in a spotlight from youngest age straight from high school um, you know with your sports career how did you find it growing up in, in the me with the media and, and sport you know um, lights cameras yeah. yes well, I loved it don't get me wrong oh, okay when you uh, when you decide that you're going to be a professional athlete you uh, you have to accept that that's that's part of being an athlete um, especially if you're going to be good at it um, yes. so I knew that I, was, I wasn't naive, I knew that I was, if I was going to play good football, which I wanted to, that but living in Perth there was going to be reasonable media coverage. Um, I probably didn't handle it as well as I, I could have. Um, I was a little bit of a la lad growing up, a little bit of a, I like to go out with my mates, like to have fun. So it was hard, you know, growing up and every time that I did something wrong, um, you know, my family having to pay the consequence as far as you know, TV vans sitting outside their house or, you know, my sister getting followed around by cameras or my girlfriends <laughs> getting uh, getting interviewed and stuff like that. I laugh at it now, but it yeah. um, didn't really bother me too much. Mm -hmm. um, I accepted, I knew what I was getting myself into. It would, it would have just been nice to, uh, to behave a little bit better, um, to be perfectly honest. Uh, mm. The media is always good when you're playing football if you're doing the right thing. Um, you know, Chris Judd doesn't have too much bad publicity because he behaves himself. Yeah. I, wish, I just wish I behaved myself a little bit more. But Daniel, going back to your sports career, and of course we will go to your behaviour. <laughs> it wasn't moment. always bad, but I'm talking about when I was younger. Um, yes. So, hyper, 
you'd have too many beers and you'd be walking down the street a little bit tipsy, which the first year out of school, you know, we didn't really get to go to Levers, you don't really get to have a beer with your mates all the time, so, and I love having a beer. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm not talking about the proper trouble yes, that I got. I'm okay. talking about just the, the teenage growing up stuff. Yes. That was often publicised when, mm. you know, that, and, and that, that was, that was, uh, that was challenging. Um, more so for my, my family than, than me. It's, mm. uh, I always had football to bury myself into. They, yes. <laughs> they, they didn't. But you know, as I say, being gorgeous, being a sports idol, oh, being <laughs> no, being young, being valuable. Yeah, yeah, being yeah? young and being uh, being young, having money and and the attitude that I had um, was good. My attitude was good for football. Don't get me wrong, yes. and it was good to be compa uh, for for me, which I, ne I was. I'm not very big, so I needed to have that attitude. And I was playing straight out of high school, but that same attitude used to get me in a little bit of strife. Uh, off the field, I just didn't know when. What when was to stop. the highlight of your career? If I have to ask you, the best best day of your career. Best best day of my career. Yes. Um, the Premiership and playing my first game. Of course, beautiful. First game. How old? How young were you? Um, I think I was still. I was a year out of school. Um, well, I was. I went finished high school in year twelve. In yes. And I played the first game. So I played the first game in April after the year of being year twelve. So seventeen turning eighteen or yes. just eighteen. Beautiful. Not sure if the game was before me. And in 2003, you won the goal of a year. Yes. H how was it for you? Yeah, it was actually good to. Uh, looking back on it, at the time I didn't. I, I liked kicking the goal. It was good, but we didn't win the game, which which kind of. Mm. I'm very competitive, so the goal didn't mean too much because it didn't it didn't equate to a winning score. No. Okay. But um, looking back on it, it was nice to nice to win it actually because. I ended up coming second in everything else in my career. <laughs> yeah. Second in the Brownlow a couple of times, second in you yes. know, numerous awards. So to actually win something was pretty good. Beautiful. Big celebration? Um, no. Well, like I said, you're losing side. Yes. Daniel, retiring from football must have been a very tough decision. Um, it wasn't a tough decision to no? retire. I'd, uh, I'd been very reasonably professional, very professional for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Didn't really have a break from high school to football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I got a lot of surgery at the end of each year. Mm -hmm. And when you get surgery, you're not allowed to travel. Wow. So I think out of 13 years, I was able to travel twice. Really? So, and then I got, um, I just became slower. I tore my hamstring off. I wasn't able to play the way I like to play. Mm -hmm. So football was becoming less enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I was ready to retire. I was ready to retire and let the hair down a little bit. Incredible. Not and as much as I did, but. Yeah. A little bit. And that was the age of you today, you now, 35? I'm 35, um, May 16. Wow. Now, we have to come to it, of course. You had your tough, tough, you know, roads and rocky road with drug and alcohol abuse, yes? Um, there's a saying, you have to hit rock bottom to come up again, yes? How did you turn it around? Daniel, um, how did you turn it around? Pretty much. How did I turn it around? I don't know. Um, I, I always thought in my head, even when I was really struggling, mm -hmm. probably because mine started off as me just having some fun. I, uh, you know, I was quite financial. I thought I'd put the hair down for six months. Yeah. And I still, still do my duties as a father and as a husband and all that. But you know, I was looking forward to being able to have a beer after where I, with my mates on a Wednesday yeah. on a Thursday or whenever and. It just, yeah, <laughs> just kind of gradually got yeah. to every day and then yeah. I was hanging around people that you know weren't really working and they were living a lifestyle that's uh, a reasonably good way to get put in jail for a you mm. know, long period of time and yeah. it just gradually got away from him then and I wasn't realising it was getting away but once I realised and it sounds silly, it sounds silly but when you're in that lifestyle and when you're you know semi-intoxicated the majority of the time, you don't really realise what you're doing. Um, once I realised, it was just a gradual process um, and just realising, having to deal with where you'd put yourself was mm -hmm. the hardest thing. Like not drinking, not doing drugs and all that. I, you know, you, you give up so much when, you, when, you're, when you're an athlete. You're abstaining from so much that the mental decision not to do that wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. But the, the decision that now I have to deal with the the problems that I cause, because you cause a lot of havoc. Mm -hmm. it, um, 
when you're carrying on like that. And the same people you meet on the way up, you know, you've got to apologise to them on the way down. So mm -hmm. having to deal daily with, with the, the hurt and the drama and the, the terror that I'd caused and, and having to face up to it was, was harder than not touching a substance. Mm -hmm. but, but then when you're facing up to those... Uh, facing those people and apologising and, 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 and living that lifestyle of trying to, trying to make amends, it, 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 it gets tough. Mm. And, yeah, and you do feel like a drink then because you're constantly dealing with, with things that you've done wrong. Um, but you just have to deal with it in the end. Mm. So what are you going to do? I asked you once if you suffered depression. You said no, never really depression, yeah? And my question is why young people today turn so much to, to substance abuse? I assume is what do you think? To cover their insecurities? I think, I think there's a number of reasons. I don't, th I don't think you can, with substance abuse or, or you know, any, any type of mm. uh, behavioural issue that uh, involves escapism, you, ca you can't put a blanket over and say this is why someone does it. Every, every person has a reason for doing it. Some people do it when they're happy to get happier. Some people do wow. it when they're sad to get happier. Yeah. You know, some people do it as a, a self-mutilation type thing. Yeah. It's a, you know, every different person has a different reason why they do it. Mm. But I think w when they're doing it, when, when it gets away from them, they shouldn't do it to start with, but when it gets away from them, it gets very, very toxic and, and toxic for the people mm. around them. How do you keep yourself going now, your, your routine, your tools to, to be all right? Obviously, you are right and you're helping others to be all right. What are your tools? What's your message? Young people watching today, you know, people that are going through something or wouldn't love to go or What's your message for them? Yeah, I was lucky. See, I, I spent my whole life as pretty much well, the majority of my life as a professional athlete. And yes. I was a professional athlete that wanted to go out with my mates all the time, that wanted to party all the time. And I abstained from it. Mm -hmm. So I already had the tools if I wanted to use them to stop. Mm -hmm. um, I was just choosing not to use them. Mm -hmm. um, but in saying that, the, the tools that I had was I, I, I love football. So I've got myself back involved in, in organised sport. I'm still playing, not very yeah. well. So coaching, not very well at the minute either. I'm actually. sure you're very modest. Um, yeah. And also, like everyone, you need to have a job. You need to have a job that you at least semi-interested in. Yes. Um, I'm lucky enough to have something that I'm, you know, really passionate about. Uh, the other thing, you know, helping people. Like, if you do something good for someone, generally it makes you feel good. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, that's been really good for me. My work with the Aboriginal peoples has helped me as much as it helps the kids, I think. And, um, yeah, it just makes me... Makes me more grounded. It's made made me more aware of the of the world. It's made me more aware, you know, that when you when you're not feeling the best, or when you've got yourself into a lot of trouble, sometimes misery loves company. And yeah. and to see that there are other people going through things that you know make my problems insignificant, really, to a degree. My problems are I bring on myself. Mm -hmm. You know, my down days I have caused them generally. <laughs> If that makes sense, so yes. I, I can reason with myself and say, well, if I didn't put myself here, yes. I wouldn't be feeling like this. I don't, I don't generally feel, you know, down and out for yeah. no reason. Mine's generally, I've done something wrong, or, you know, I've, I've got to do something or apologise, or you know, my behaviour is uh, causing me the anxiety that that, mm -hmm. that I've had. Um, I do understand with that people do not people that don't do what I do <laughs> still feel down, and and that's why I'm here really to. Um, raise awareness that it's okay to talk about it, really. Daniel, when you were going through your tough road uh, with your addictions and with your behaviour, it must have been pretty tough on your family to stand by, support you. Sam, your sister, who is now, you know, conquering the soccer world. Uh, how was she towards what you were doing then? We turning uh, back the clock, well, young and silly and I wild think, at heart. I mm. think Sam always, me and Sam were pretty close growing up. Um, mm -hmm. And she's got a similar attitude towards her training and her sport that mm -hmm. I had when I was at her age. Um, so I think Sam always knew that I had the ability to stop my behaviour that I was doing. And uh, she just stopped talking to me because I wasn't choosing to do it. I was choosing to continue to be a lunatic and mm. have too much fun and not uh, not be a father and, and be weak and, mm. and just, you know, not live up to your responsibilities that, mm. that you've got. So she just chose not to talk to me. She didn't talk to me for, for a long time, um, which, was, which was good. I was um, not good for me at the time, but looking back on it, it was probably, probably the right decision. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you're not doing the right thing, you don't deserve to speak to people that um, are constantly doing it if, you, if you're choosing consciously did, not to do the right did thing. Did you suffer when she didn't talk to you then? Honestly, like, oh. At the time, not really, yeah. to be perfectly honest. I wasn't really thinking um, mm -hmm. about those type of things. I was thinking about all the things that don't really matter in life. And when I, when I um, started behaving and started to live a healthy lifestyle and she still wasn't talking to me, I suffered then. Okay. Okay, so she was a tough on you. Huh? Yeah, tough, tough love. love. <laughs> tough love to get you, <laughs> to get to my you family back on a track. Bit, yeah. Obviously beautiful. Daniel, you, do you think that people's expectations of happiness, young people's expectations of happiness, are a little bit unrealistic today and maybe too high, you know, too high expectations? Um, I think so. I think we have a right to be happy. I, but I think people's expectations of the percentage of their life that they're going to be happy is, is a little bit unrealistic. I'm quite happy, I'm quite willing to live through, you know, the majority harder days just mm -hmm. for the good ones. And I think sometimes people think that they're going to be happy forever. We, we have to work through the hard times for the good times. Cool. Um, and the, for me, the good times are worth it. We have to earn our happiness, correct? Not so much earn it, but we just, we can't expect that, you know, life's going to to give us that every single day is a happy day. Um, yes. You don't, I don't think you have to earn to be happy, but you, you have to accept that there's going to be days that, there's the majority of days, not the majority, but I think a little bit over 50% of the time, I wouldn't say that I was jumping out of my skin, mm. but in saying that, I'm not, I'm not that down that, you know, I'm not looking forward to the next time I'm catching up with Amber's or Weera for a beer and having a laugh. Yeah. So what's happiness to you today? And it might be cliche question. I don't mean today, but all together. What makes you happy, honestly? Like, What makes me happy? Um, a holiday, a nanny, yes. three mates and a pint. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very realistic. Not too well, high and expectations. The misses, and the missus. <laughs> <laughs> and the missus, of course. Yeah. Um, looking back on your journey, what's most important thing? Again, it's cliche, but I have to do it. What's the most important thing you think you've learned through your journey? Um, the most important thing I've learned through my journey. It's hard to single out the most yes. important thing. Um, the most important thing I've learned is probably to look after yourself mm -hmm. before anyone else. Uh, and that sounds very selfish, but mm. without you know you being healthy and you being your number one priority. Mm. Um, well, this is going to kill me for saying that. No, uh, that is true. You literally can't really help anyone else or you can't do anything. That's you got to make sure you're right before you can really do too much. That's why they say on the plane, first put a gas mask <laughs> on you and then on your, correct, on your next correct. to you. So but that's spot on. You've yeah? got to make sure you're doing it though for the right reasons. Yes. You can't just be uh, self Daniel, if you could turn back the clock, what would you tell 15-year-old Daniel today? Ooh. What would I tell a 15 year old Daniel today? Probably a number, th number of things. Um, I'd definitely tell him not to do drugs. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably tell him to relax a little bit. Um, that su success in, in my industry could have been a little bit slower achieved and, and sustained for a little bit longer, I think. I think I was a bullet at a gate. I wanted everything straight away. I wanted to play AFL football straight away. I wanted to, you know, compete at the, at the top level straight away, and I think it was probably at the detriment to my body, which mm. ended my football career early, and, and definitely at the detriment to my uh, life in general, as far as after footy and even the way I behaved during football. So that would probably be the thing on a personal level that I'd, that I'd tell him. Daniel, you were the testimonial speaker at this year, Men in Black Ball, which supports the immense mental health and suicide prevention. What made you do it and, and what's the main reason of you giving back this way? Um, I think it's, like I, I've never had um, depression myself or, or being diagnosed with a depression. Mm -hmm. I've obviously had myself in situations where I'm feeling pretty bad, but like I said, it's my, my issue, not, uh, mm -hmm. not my body's issue, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, but I think it's a, a fantastic, me being involved is a good way to, um, promote obviously uh, the, 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 the men's depression side of things but also promote the fact that it's okay to talk about it and mm -hmm. that m the only way to get help is to verbalize what you're going through and, and there's a stigma amongst men that it's you know 
not tough and, and it's a very old yes. school way of thinking and I and it's to the detriment of you know what's going on at the minute we had you know that Yaron boy who'd had his troubles oh, himself yeah. which is a, a a terrible terrible story and you know if me being involved could make it you know more I don't know more easy for other men to talk about it if they're struggling yes. then then I was quite happy to do it it's only a short short time out of you, know, you haven't asked me for too many time commitments yes, so yes, I'm you. quite happy to help you in a cause that like that and you know hopefully it raises awareness and uh, has made made it easier for someone to talk about I'm Absolutely. happy with that uh, I'm happy with that outcome beautiful Daniel why do you think men or do you think the stigma is changing slowly do you think the men don't talk boys don't cry syndrome you know is is getting a little bit softer I think through initiatives like yourself opening up you know yeah I think I think it's getting softer with the say the, the, the people that are growing up in this yes. day and age yes. um, so I think it's still there still is a stigma attached to it say people that were born from the, from the 80s onwards yeah um, I think they still have you know that, that way of thinking that was bred into us from the past um, society is a little bit different these days young people want to be spoken to a little bit differently we treat young people with a lot more respect I think with the way we talk to them in, in, a, fo yeah. in a, a sporting sense in a in mm -hmm. a business sense in a even in a, in a sense when they're in uni and stuff like that you have to explain everything to them now yes. and you have to speak to them you know in a, in a manner in which you, you'd like to be spoken to and I think they're growing up in a different environment I still think the older people from the 1980s you know and below were brought up differently and, and mm. there still is a stigma that it's not to talk about something like depression you're not being a man and you're not being tough and if you can't deal with your own problems then you are you know you're being a little bit um, feminine to a degree yeah um, but I think that's uh, it's, it's got to change and we've got to look at it like an illness and uh, and once we start doing that I think uh, people will be a lot better off where do you see Daniel Kerr in 10 years time I'm 45, geez. Um, <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> grey, hopefully doing a similar thing to what I'm doing now, just a little yes. bit more busy. And um, I do hello darling. Yeah, still, <laughs> still, still, still coaching footy I hope. Um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm pretty, con not content, I'd like to be busy, I'd like to maybe have a, a little bit of a different career path and have the foundation going, but yes. I, that will come and slowly, I'm, I'm quite confident something will you know come up and something that tickles my fancy will will come along um, I do like I, like I like life to be interesting and I like I like to be stimulated so mm -hmm. I hope I hope that's happening uh, I hope I'm still being a good dad or better dad than what I am now I hope I improve as a father yes um, I don't might get married not sure probably yes um, other than that I'll just be greyer and older and Sounds closer beautiful. to death Daniel, which rock, which sports star was your idol? Or who who made you? You know, who was your your role model? Or who is today? Uh, who motivated you apart from Daniel? Did you have your idols? Yeah, I had my idols. I, yes. I don't agree. I, I don't agree with having a role model that you can't. Okay. You don't have contact with. And even yes. when I was young, I didn't kind of think like that. My, my idols were Michael Jordan and Peter Matera. Mm -hmm. Um, I still had Peter Matera's poster on the wall when I was I'm playing just going it to with ask him. Whose with him, yeah. Poster you have on the wall? I had yeah. uh, John Worsfold poster on my wall, Wayne Carey's. So those mm -hmm. were the guys that I wanted to play football like. Yes. Um, I definitely didn't play like John or Wayne Carey, but a little bit like Peter, not as good, but so oh. it worked out to a degree. Uh, my role model really when I was growing up was my dad. He played Beautiful. waffle. He's my coach. So hmm. last question, Daniel. If I was to hand you now. A magic wand. What would you wish for the world? What would I wish for the world? Probably to give up religion. Really? Yeah, that would be mine. Give up the give up religion. <laughs> it's probably not a good answer, but no, just that's live. okay. I what think motivates it, I think you it, to think uh, this way? I just don't like people fighting over their beliefs. Yeah. I, I agree that you have strong beliefs, and you you should you believe in what you believe. But I don't think that that belief should be. Um, cast upon other people and, and we should be fighting over things that like that yeah uh, I think a certain amount of competition between countries and all that is good for the good for us I mean, that makes us makes us live better but I don't see religion making us live better anymore I think it used to in the past I think it was a good tool in the past to to live you know a better lifestyle but I don't I don't think I think it's um, I think it's run its race 
Yes. Thank you. Daniel, thank you so much for being on Hello Darling. <laughs> I wish you all your dreams to come true. Thank no you worries. very much. It's and we're looking experience. forward to, you know, your giving back and helping others. Jeez, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.